Hello and welcome to The Mill. I am your host, Dusty Crane, and this week I thought we would talk about, after Tapestry, what is next for Stonemaier Games? Now, we're already here at the tail end of 2019. Who can believe it? It went by super quick. It seems like we were just getting wingspan at the beginning of the year, but here we are, and... Tapestry, I know, is still coming to a lot of people. I know that that's still a, uh, a conversation piece in Board Game Geek. So um, more and more copies have been showing up, and we've started to see strategy guides. In fact, um, there is one graphic that popped up uh, over the week that I would like to share, and it's this one right here. Um, what I thought was really cool about this graphic is what it does is it looks at the different buildings and the shapes and the hexes, or I'm sorry, the squares that they take up and tells you based on the mat and how they have their different little orange dots or areas that you can't place on. Um, it gives you an idea of what buildings, uh, how many different configurations you can fit on that mat. So maybe you can go ahead and plan for, well, I really want to get this building and there's only one place that'll fit on this particular mat, so I need to plan ahead. Now, what I did find interesting is this little bullet point that says, if you have the desert, then, and you get, I think it's the rubber works, you cannot fit that anywhere on the mat. Now, the, the rules do allow for you to place your building so it hangs off of the mat, but in terms of ideal scoring, obviously you want to go ahead and get every part of the building on the building. So um, yeah, I, I find that chart really fascinating. I think it's going to be really good for people that want to like, you know, kind of maximize and start thinking about strategies and what buildings they want to go after and maybe which um, civilization mats are ideal for which strategies. I think that's probably going to be the key to getting into those high 300s and will we ever see a 400 game based on some of these beginning scores I'm seeing on the Tapestry Facebook page? Maybe. But that's Tapestry, and I wanted to talk about what happens after Tapestry. And that leads us into kind of the latest Stonemeyer newsletter that they sent out, and they always uh, show, you know, this graphic right here where it shows, you know, this is the game's tentative release date, here's its code name. We have yet one more title being released this year, and it's not a guess, it's Wingspan's first expansion. What is a guess is what is in that expansion. We know that it's going to be another area of the world. It's not going to center on North American birds. It could be South American birds. It could be European birds. It could be Australian birds. I don't know. Um, I do know that there are a lot of other people besides Americans that are excited to see their country represented. I, and I'm really excited that that Stonemeyer and Elizabeth are willing to um, put in that work to give us some more expansions and some more birds to expand our knowledge of, of what's out there. So um, that's super cool. I went to to the Facebook or the Instagram page of, of Anna, the the artist for Wingspan, and I tried to find clues. And the truth is that I'm just not enough of a birder to go, that's not a North American bird. That's not a North American bird. And I did a lot of Google searching and, and tried to find some hints for you, but I couldn't. The only thing I could find is maybe a hint as to what new mechanics we could see. Um, and this is a something that was posted. It's either New York Post or New York Times. I don't know which one. There was a, an article um, talking about Elizabeth and what uh, you know, what she's working on and, and really just kind of covering wingspan in general, but they had a picture of people playtesting right here. And one of the things that people picked up, up on is the fact that one of those bird cards isn't sitting, you know, kind of portrait style. It's actually horizontal and taking up two spots there in the habitat. And so there's a pretty good guess that that is going to be one of the mechanics of this new expansion is, you know, kind of, I don't know if it's larger birds. I would imagine it is birds with maybe, you know, massive wingspans or just, you know, could we maybe start seeing, uh, was that testing for like a, I mean, birds are dinosaurs, right? Could we get a dinosaur expansion? Probably not, but I'm super excited that that, that could maybe possibly be a promo, maybe, hopefully, one day. Please? Please? Um, but... 
Yeah, so what are you hoping for in this first expansion for Wingspan? Um, I don't know if it's going to be... So here, here's what ideally what I want. I'm, I'm very simple um, in terms of I want the pretty birds, right? I want the colorful birds. I want like the, the, the tropical birds that have a crazy array of colors. Um, I think that would look good on the mats. And so regardless of, of where they come from, that's, that's kind of what I want to see next. But you know what? More wingspan in different ways or different twists on that game uh, work for me. Which leads me to um, focusing a little bit more on the community. Now, in the past, I've done a video about, it was almost literally immediately after Wingspan released. It was crazy. Like, people were still, you know, really struggling to get copies. And Sam Gray came out with his Wingspan expansion. Um, I, I think it was European Birds was, was his focus. And knocked it out of the park in terms of it seemed like the birds were really true to kind of the formula that that elizabeth put out it didn't seem like oh there's this european bird and it's twice as powerful as another bird in the original that has you know the same cost like it seemed like he kind of pegged the formula and made a very genuine uh you know attempt at or or I guess his version of the expansion and covered different birds and and that was um, really cool and I think the fans really embraced it. However, I think almost immediately after making it available, um, it kind of w was taken off uh, offline again. And part of the reason for that, I think, was the art that was used on the cards. Um, Sam went ahead and pulled those. I think it was a licensing thing. I'm not sure, but. Um, it's available again in, in some form. Um, on BGG, Sam posted a another PDF, and it is oceanic birds and uh, European birds. And it is a kind of a, I think it's a reimagining of what he had before, because there are the dual power birds. So you had some birds that you have to choose whether or not you are taking a win played bonus or a ongoing bonus. Or there are some that you choose between a win played bonus or an end of game bonus or some combination of the two where you have an option, you have to choose what you are going to do with that bird. And I think that's super cool. Now, in the pictures that Sam has shared on BGG, you see the full bird card laid out, but people have kind of, you know, mentioned to him, when I go to the PDF, there's no bird art whatsoever. Sam has acknowledged that in order to use that bird art, he would have to pay money. And so he took that off, but encouraged people to go find their favorite per, uh, pictures of birds or whatever. And it's easily added to the PDF. So if that is something you're interested in, maybe you want to, uh, you can't wait for that first expansion and you want to try oceanic birds or European birds, Sam has made that available. Now, what I really like about what Sam has done here, though, is, and I'm trying to bring it up on my iPad, um, I'm not just not making eye contact with you guys, um, <laughs> is there's four modules to this thing he put out. Each the, Now, the module is, one is European birds, the second module is, um, you know, oceanic birds. He's also got an automa uh, piece, he's got that, uh, what we originally talked about, like the chicks, uh, the chicks and uh, hatchlings board. And let's see here, then there was also uh, habitats. So four modules, European birds, oceanic birds, new bonus cards, and the habitat track. Now the new bonus cards I think are exclusive for his expansion, um, but the other pieces, the new birds can work interchangeably with Wingspan. And it's just so well done. He's got the Automa instructions there that say, hey, if you want to use your copy of Wingspan, but you want to use my habitat, expansion go ahead in this rule book it's, i'm going to post a picture right here it looks just like what jamie had made available so this looks like a legitimate um ex fan made uh, expansion but it, it by a fan that's it's so well done um i think i think it's worth taking a look at you will have to add your own bird art and the the pdf itself doesn't have uh, the card backs, but those are available by a uh, Stonemeyer. Stonemeyer made the the card art for many other games available, and yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and post a link to that in the uh, the video description here. And that's all I have for you this week. I wanted to know how excited are you for this expansion? How excited are, have you checked out Sam's uh, most recent re release of the PDF? And um, what do you think of that? 
I will uh, see you guys again next week. Take care of yourselves and each other. And thanks for, thanks for watching. Bye.